Welcome to Springfield City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And I'd like to begin the show today first by uh, remembering D-Day. Today is June 6th. It's the 70th anniversary of D-Day. And we want uh, everyone to remember the sacrifices that all our people made. And my dad was a Second World War veteran. So let's uh, remember what was done for this country uh, 70 years ago today. It's interesting because I was going to do I was going to say the same thing. So yeah. <laughs> great minds think alike. We already know this. <laughs> but it's been an interesting week here in Fall River. Um, we've been threatened. We're being we're getting the scare tactics, which are usual for our administration. You know, legislation by crisis. Um, for those of you who may not have heard, the mayor has basically said, if my budget isn't approved, I will put this city in receivership. I will shut city government down. I will issue the pink slips, and that will be it. And then you won't like what the receivers do because they will raise your taxes, raise your water rates, and give you no services. Your employment contracts will be in the receptacle, to quote him. Your collective bargaining agreements will be in the receptacle. So he's threatening our employees. Sounds to me like we got a lot of violations of a lot of Massachusetts general laws, Chipper. Yeah, well, unfortunately for the mayor, the, it, it is illegal. It's a prohibited practice uh, to attempt to coerce uh, employees. But he's doing it, uh, going on the radio and threatening. It seems like the order of business in Fall River is, is not to come forward with, a, with a, a budget based on any kind of reality. It's to, it's to extort money from the taxpayer and coerce public employees into showing up because you're going to tell them you're going to lay everybody off. Well, guess what? Guess who isn't getting laid off, people? His legal staff that are making huge money. Um, his pal from school that's now the neighborhood coordinator, who in three years has gone from 40000 to 75000 All the political plum jobs, all the people with their heads so deep in the trough that they're, they're suffocating are still going to be here. But the taxpayer, again, gets taken and taken and the city is on the verge of receivership well mr. mayor you brought us here we sat here last year and listened to a budget presentation when your city administrator Sean Kadeem said that the city side budget was on firm footing and it was sustainable yet here we are 16 million dollars in the hole and we say oh it's because of the landfill it's because well you knew the landfill was going to close the day you took office. You knew that the SAFER grant was going to run out when you got it. And what did you do? Nothing. And if I remember correctly, at the end of this mayor's first term, it was, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Please give me another chance. I won't do it again. And at the end of his second term, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Please, I won't do it again. Now we're in the third term, and guess what? We got a lot of big mistakes, and we're only halfway through the term. And not even halfway through the term, I mean. <laughs> uh, this is getting to be scary, people. Um, he's not even following the law when it comes to handling the city money, and neither are any of the members of his finance team. We brought to the attention of the city council and to you, the viewers, that the health insurance fund was losing money and that money was missing. But at the same time, we did not hear from the mayor or the city council what happened to that money. And when the city treasurer was asked, for the first time we got an answer that there's approximately $4.1 million in the employee trust account and $144,000 or $174,000 in the city side account. And that was based on June 30th of last year. It wasn't even current numbers. Um, so I have a question to ask. What's the current numbers? Why aren't they being brought to us? And I've had numerous communications with the Attorney General's office. Uh, I know Chip has been speaking to the Inspector General. Um, we've spoken with the US Attorney General's office, the FBI. And we're wondering what's going to happen. What's going to happen to Fall River? And what do you people want to happen? It's scary when we look at what's going on in Fall River and 
it seems nobody's doing anything. Although last night on Facebook, an uproaring happened. People were saying they weren't going to tolerate threats, they weren't going to tolerate this, and they want to make a point. And so phone calls were being made, Facebook messages were going out saying, show up at the city hall, at the city council budget meeting on Monday, and make a stand. So you know what? That sounds like a good idea, but you've got to have the people, and you've got to know what's going on. And speaking with the people uh, that handle or are working on the committee to recall Mayor Flanagan, there were 172 messages after the threat was made on the radio saying that they will walk the streets and get the signatures to get a recall election going. Is that saying something? Is that saying something, Chipper? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm kind well, of lost. It, it's saying that finally everybody's beginning to pay attention. You know, the fact is that the, the really scary part is that this budget shows that the mayor has learned absolutely nothing. Again, it's a budget that reduces essential services that are paid for by city money. The fact is, there's never been a preparation. This budget is business as usual, and this is how we got here. We'll go to the firefighter section of the budget. We heard the number 153 that the mayor himself said was the absolute bare minimum. This is what the minimum is. Yet, the city's only funded 142 firefighters. He's saying that we're going to fund 33 with trash, pay as you throw money, which we don't know if we're going to get, and we don't know how much we're going to get. So again, we're spending money we don't know that we have. Also, the enforcement is predicated on a grant that they haven't got yet. But the, but the reality is, in the, in the 2014 fiscal year budget, the mayor of this city reduced the complement of the fire department by 11 city-funded jobs. And again this year, they're 11 short. So we're not putting more into public safety, we're putting less into public safety, and that's not what we should be doing with our tax dollars. The fact is that he is not addressing any of our problems. He's keeping the fat, and he's dealing with the lean. And I'm gonna go back to a letter we read on a few shows ago, stated March 6th, 2014. It's to the mayor. It's from Senator Edward Markey, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Congressman William Keating, and Congressman Joseph P. Kennedy III. And I'm going to read just the one section uh, that, to the mayor. It says, however, we respectfully request to be made aware of the city's plan of action in the event there are no additional federal funds, which is highly probable given the late stage of the process. We also request that the city make us aware of long-term plans to ensure that it maintains staffing levels beyond 2014. Guess what? We don't have a plan. We never had a plan. We never will have a plan with this guy because his plan is to tax our way out of everything and threaten to lay firefighters and police officers and DPW workers off to gouge money from the taxpayers in this city, who, by the way, don't really have a lot of money. But he's going he's gonna to parade the usual suspects up there at, at the budget hearings. He's going to parade the neighborhood groups that he spent taxpayers' dollars on to fix their parks. And they don't really care because they've got money, and now they've got a park. So the hell with the people who, who make nothing in this city, almost 25% below the poverty level. He's going he's gonna to parade <laughs> the Office of Economic Destruction, Kenny Fiola up there, who has an annual income of almost $400,000 in his household when the city of Fall River's average household income is $34,000 and the second lowest in the state. But these are the usual suspects. They all have a vested interest. He's going to have, he's going to try to fill the city council chambers with, with city workers who are, who are in fear of their jobs. Well, I'm going to be there Monday and I'm going to tell them that, listen, you should really fear for your job. Because the fact is, getting this, getting this is not going to help. It's only going to hurt because it's a short-term deal. If it falls on its face, you're going to get laid off anyway. But ultimately, we are, gonna, we are going into receivership, and you're going to lose your jobs anyway. So why don't we try to fix the city right now, call us bluff, or kick them out of office? You know, it's interesting because 
This is a man who speaks about increasing taxes every time you turn around. And what's the one thing he doesn't pay in Fall River? He doesn't pay taxes. He's not a, he's not a property owner. He rents. So what do you do? I mean, it's real easy to say, more taxes, more taxes. Even Kenny Fiola said, let them pay more taxes. Sounds like Marie Antoinette saying, let them eat cake. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's to the point where, you know, Fall River itself is going into the toilet. And people are saying that. And they say, oh, you shouldn't talk so bad about the city. I'm proud of my city. You know what? You can be proud of your city. I can be proud of our city. Chipper can be proud of our city. The problem, that we're, the, thing, the problem is we're not proud of our elected officials because they're not doing anything to change this. Mayor Flanagan was told when they awarded this grant and they handed him the, you know, funny check, as I call it, because, you know, they're not real. They're just there for a show. You know, he was handed it and he was said, talked to in a low tone. It said, make sure you have a plan for this before it ends. Well, guess what? The plan never came. It's not that Mayor Flanagan is a bad person. He just doesn't have management skills. He's a bad mayor. And there is a big difference between a bad person and a bad mayor. And that's something that we need to start looking at as the people of Fall River. Because the people of Fall River say, well, if you attack me as my job, you're attacking me. No, we're not. We're attacking your job. Business is business, personal is personal. And the problem is right now, the business is becoming personal. And it's becoming personal for a lot of people. And that's a difficult situation to be in. When you look at the budgets, and you really should look at it, it's available on the city website, fallriverma.org. Take a peek at that budget. See where the money's going. You know, I found out today that we have four assessors. Why do we need four assessors? I know we have four treasurers. It seems none of them know what they're doing. And, you know, why do we need four or five people to do the same job? That's salaries. That's money. You know why? Because it's political patronage. I've got to keep all my friends employed with high-paying jobs where they don't do anything. And there's no accountability. You know, Terry Sullivan's the only department head I know that blew a grant that could have paid for this CSO project and we wouldn't have a water fee. Did he get fired? No, he was on vacation. No big deal. We'll give him a raise and, you know, move him up in the department. Do I think he's dedicated to his job? Yes, I do. But we need accountability. We need transparency. And you need to know that the people of Fall River aren't going to be happy with you because you made a mistake. That's one of the big things we have. You know, Chip, it scares me because we actually made the Miami Herald this week. Okay? The Miami Herald. Did they talk about Fall River being a beautiful community? Did they talk about Fall River, you know, expanding, growing? No. They talked about Fall River's concern over losing a casino, and they can't get any verification from... Foxwoods, the mayor, on whether or not the casino's coming to Fall River. And the sad part about it is Foxwoods admitted, we're looking at all options. And the mayor's not saying anything bad because, well, you know, beggars can't be choosers at this point. And if you're a buyer, you're looking for the best deal you can possibly get. Well, the mayor's not saying anything. This is the Miami Herald article downloaded. The mayor was not available. Uh, quote, Flanagan's office did not respond to requests for comment on this issue, which is normal. But I'm going to get back to the point that CJ made. You know, it is very possible to like this city and even love this city without loving the way it's being run. And some people can't grasp that concept. I've never been afraid to tell people I'm from Fall River. There are people who are making a lot of money in this city who don't admit most of the time they're from Fall River. When they go out, they'll say, oh, I'm from down near the Cape, or I'm from the South Coast. And these are the people who are always up there saying, you know, you guys are all negative. You hate Fall River. No, I don't hate Fall River. I hate you. <laughs> I hate the way you run the city. You guys have run this city into the toilet. And I negotiated with the city when we had $12 million in the stabilization fund. This mayor is incompetent. Is he a bad person? No. Would I have a hamburger with him? I did. But the fact is, would I let him run a one-man parade? No. 
because he's not, he can't do it. Look what he does for this city. Nothing. He doesn't even own a house in this city. He doesn't pay taxes. Look at the people he hires. We hire a Rhode Island resident right out of law school and pay us $70,000 as a starting salary. When if a Fall River or anybody from Bristol County that goes to the Bristol County DA's office out of law school starts at between thirty-five and thirty-eight thousand dollars a year, and we hire her for almost double the going rate with no experience, and she is now making eighty-one thousand dollars in a few years, so her salary's gone up eleven thousand dollars. And you think she cares about the taxes? You think she lives in a city that has twenty-five percent of its people living below the poverty line? The next time you go to City Hall, and I said this on the last show, look for her Volkswagen bug with the Rhode Island plates. She's not going to pay one dime of property taxes. She's not going to pay one cent in water fees. She's not going to buy one trash bag. But she's going to drive home tonight to Rhode Island with her $81,000. And the mayor's old school chum that he gave a job that I don't know why, I still don't know why we need it, Neighborhood associations are always advocating for themselves. They'll be there because he built them a park. Why do we need a liaison? Why doesn't the mayor talk directly to them? But he got a job and said, ah, don't worry about it. He started at 40 grand. Well, guess what, guys? He's up to 75,000. And he's got an assistant and an unpaid uh, clerk. You know, it's, it's just very interesting to see, though, how the mayor has flip-flopped so rapidly just in this week. Because initially, when the week started, it was, we will go through your trash. We will knock on your doors, and we will find you. Then it became, the cameras are already there. We're going to utilize it. We are going to look through the trash, and we will knock on the doors so that we can educate you. We're going to educate the public. We're not going to find them right away. We're going to educate them. But eventually, if they continue to be noncompliant, we are going to have to find them. Um, so there was a flip-flop right there. And it made the city administrator, who was basically forcing down people's throat that we will go through your trash, we will knock on your door, and we will find you. Now she looks like, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Because the mayor turned around and said, we're going to educate you. And it's an educational process. It truly is. But you're going to educate them? <laughs> I think that position came out about two hours after our show was posted. Yes. Uh, we talked about why we shouldn't start out with fines and how people shouldn't be knocking on doors because, as we said in the last show, we have buildings in this city that the police officers won't go in without backup. So you're going to send some, some trash Gestapo person in there to knock on the door to find somebody? It, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. We also talked about how if people are educated, they might actually embrace it if there was a transition. We don't have a city with, with a very high educational level. It's going to take a while for people to grasp this. It's also going to take a while for people to understand it. If your five-year-old throws something in the trash and you miss it, that you may get a fine. So the fact is that this is a thought. But as soon as we mention it here on Spindle City Straight Talk, all of a sudden positions change. He's on the radio. He's making statements. We know you watch, Will. Oh, yeah, we know that for a we fact. We know you watch. So. So take heed. We're, look, we're, we're watching you, too, and we're telling you. We don't like threats. I don't like to be coerced, and I don't like to be extorted. And, and you know, what's also funny about that is on that same show, we talked about how the school department was going to have to pay for bags to um, get rid of their trash. And not more, again, than two hours after the show was posted, um, Mr. Coogan went on the air and said, oh, no, we don't have to pay for bags. Instead, we're just going to contract to DCM to pick up our trash. And they're going to pay either by the ton or by the bin or however it may be. Uh, and if that price isn't acceptable, they can always go out and private bid it. So I thought that was interesting, too. Uh, because, again, how do you have your own departments buying bags from you? It's just a way to bolster your budgets. Um, and I, I think even the trash removal from the schools is just another way for them to bolster their budget. Uh, you know, we'll give DCM some more money by contracting it out. Uh, but I went through the, uh, a couple of the housing 
Authority properties, and the Housing Authority has it all privatized. It's uh, Careaway or Cartaway or the yellow Cleanway. 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 Yeah, yep. Cleanway. They're, pick they're doing all the pickups. So already part of the city is privatized. How much more is going to be privatized? I know that a couple of – I came into the studio today, and I heard a disposal company advertising on the radio to give you the lowest possible price on your trash disposal. I mean, is that what's going to happen? It's – he has made it very clear to everyone that if his – trash pay as you throw program does not produce the budget is not sustainable he cannot fund the budget and that's the problem you know they're in they're in as the bard said lies the rub there's the catch 22 the fact is that there can only be two outcomes with pay as you throw and both of them are not good they're bad the first thing is the city gets turned into a dump which it will be after the first fine, there will be people driving down the street throwing trash bags out the windows. You know, we already see Fall River is a mess. You see TVs and tires because you have to pay for disposal of those things. You see anything that has to be paid for in addition to your normal service, you see it on the street. So that's number one. The other outcome is, and it's a very real possibility, that this whole program crashes and burns because this budget is down to to pennies they can't afford to lose five dollars without this budget crashing and it's and it's predicated on money that isn't there and again as last year when I appeared before the council and said this city is on the verge of receivership this budget is not accurate it's taking into account money we don't have, and guess what? Now this mayor is saying, if you don't give me all these t increases, uh, we're going into receivership. Well, you know, after people start getting fined and landlords begin to get aggravated, they're going to they're going to contract out to private vendors because you don't have to separate trash with private vendors. And the other factor is that it, you know they they're going to do that, or they're going to get rid of their property or leave their property derelict, and they're going to begin to leave. And again, we have a city that has one of the lowest percentages of, of ownership of property in the state. We only have 37% of the people in this community that own property. And the fact is that, you know, we have a lot of absentee landlords. And you know what they're going to say? Hey, like they did with the mill, the King Philip Mill. You know, let my taxes pile up, take the property. I'm sick of it. I'm yeah. not going to deal with it. And so, the, you know, the solution is not even well thought out. This program will not work. And what are they going to do if they stop getting, an, if they're not getting enough money in from the bags? Are they going to start becoming really aggressive in looking through your trash to look for ways? We all know that the mayor sends people out to ticket during snowstorms and they, they ticket, and they, they have speed traps and they try, to, they try to raise money that way. And the fact is, what's going to happen when they find out the revenue coming in from, from the bags is not sufficient? Are they going to raise it? Because we don't know if that, that ordinance does it. There's no ordinance. There's no ordinance. We don't know, what, we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, again, we have a budget based on what ifs. It's always what ifs. And if you, as you stated earlier, and as I clearly remember, before Sean Kadim was summarily discharged, uh, from the city, uh, he made several testimonies where he said that the school department budget was unsustainable, but the city budget was sustainable. Yet we found out after he left that that wasn't necessarily true. Now we find out because Councilor Pereira was very vocal about it. Uh, she posted pictures of her and Councilor Mitchell uh, in a local restaurant with Sean Kadim and another individual looking over the budget. Why did we go to Sean Kadeem with our budget? Not that it's a secret, because Sean Kadeem could download it off the city website as anyone else can, but why did we go to Sean Kadeem? I know for years, uh, Linda Perra has always defended Sean, Madi Sean Kadeem when people would come out against him, but this is the man that's responsible for this budget. He and the mayor are responsible for the budget we're currently in. The 2000 2014-15 uh, budget is 
Kathy Ann and the mayor, which is much worse than this one. <laughs> but do you always go back to the source of your potential problem or the potential source of your problem? Or do you try to look at it with clean eyes? Now, I know, Chip, that you gave some suggestions to the fire department on reorganization and whatnot. And we don't have a lot of time today to get into it, but those were good ideas to streamline the fire department, put everyone to work appropriately, and make sure we had the money and the budget to challenge the fires and to challenge the services that the city needed without racking up the tax dollars. And the city never took that. They never did anything with it. They took some, they took some I, I believe they took a few elements, but the fact is, you know, there's never been, and there should be, as during the Carlton and Viveris administration, a very, very close look at reorganizing every city department, eliminating as much of the fat as possible, because with this guy, we've created more and more supervisors' positions. We have two supervisory positions in DPW or CMH or whatever, you know, whatever. They designation, the nomenclature. But the fact is that we have a top-heavy government, uh, and those aren't the people that they get threatened or get laid off. And the reality is that, you know, I find it ironic, and I, I think it's good that they met in a city city restaurant because most of the time the mayor meets in in out of town restaurants. East I know East. I know he met with the firefighters in East Providence or Providence, and and he seems to not even frequent local restaurants. So it's nice that they met in the city, but as you said, I sat in a meeting in Boston with Sean Kadeem and Linda Pereira, where Mr. Kadeem said that this city was five hundred million dollars in the hole. That's a half a billion dollars. And that was a year, over a year ago. So they, they knew that we were on the verge of receivership. That's why we said the budget was nothing more than a fabrication and a fairy tale. And this year's budget's a bigger fairy tale. Well, you know, seems that the old line of those who do not learn from history are destined to repeat it is very true. Because it seems that Fall River is about ready to repeat its history. And if the city goes down into receivership, the mayor is right. We're not going to like it. Because we're not going to have the services we need. And people who remember or even have read about the previous receivership the city went in, I don't think there's anyone left around that might still be alive that have went through that. But I mean, we had parks that were unmowed. We had trash all over the place. We had city services that didn't happen. Well, I thank you for watching. And on Monday is the budget hearing. Please be sure you show up. Show up and voice your opinion. Thank you for watching and have a great day. And wear a trash bag. <laughs>